Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and I'm going to do a tutorial for you. <laughs> you guys know how I feel about these tutorials. I'm just not good at it. But um, I am going to show you how, because there was a lot of requests for the um, waterfall folio, which this was one of them here. And then... This was another one. So as you can see, can you see that? Um, literally, I mean the tutorial I have always followed has been Ginger from my sister Scrapper. Um, I never saw anyone do this before her. I'm pretty sure this was her um, creation but all I do is take her original tutorial and then make it work for whatever scraps I have so in some cases if you look here like this spine is one inch but this spine is three quarters of an inch um, and that's literally because that's the scrap of chipboard that I had left on the table this um, uh, what do you call it the actual cover is just like one eighth inch larger than this one but for the most part this is the standard size that I have when I cut like a 12 by 12 piece of chipboard this is what I'm left with which is usually a four and a half by eight and a half um, pieces for a folio but literally it could be any size you want it to I just hate wasting things so when I have chipboard pieces, I try to create, whether it's an album or a folio, out of whatever's left. And then also, same thing with the scraps. So on her original tutorial, she has an angled side pocket, I believe. Um, the first one I ever did was the Graphic 45 Good Old Sport. Um, so, you know, you can easily find her videos for that, but... You could change it up however you want to, so it's totally up to you. But on this one, because I really love the paper and I wanted to show the paper, I only made one pocket. And I did not do any type of like gussets or anything on my pocket. I literally just glued down the sides and had a tighter pocket. And that's typically what I like to do with the waterfalls. So things aren't moving around when I'm opening and closing it. But you can easily do that too because there's a lot of room with this spine. Um, to add a whole bunch of other things but for me you know I have a lot of embellishments on this one so I didn't need to have a lot of things in the pocket and then on this one I did the waterfall is four by six um, or it holds four by six photos so they are probably yeah, four and a quarter by six and a quarter so again, totally your preference. And then when you look at this one, I did multiple pockets on the side because I had different things to tuck in here. And then on this one, I did four by four um, photo mats. So it measures four and a quarter by four and a quarter to fit a four by four photo on here. And I only did five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and then the last one lifts up and it's a pocket underneath. So again, totally up to you. And I really suggest going and doing Ginger's tutorial, <laughs> not mine. But just because you guys asked, I'm gonna do it for you. And hopefully um, I have better luck with them uploading. Last time it took like a day for all of them to upload. So we will see. So I'm just going to set these books aside. So what we need is for this folio is just take a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. I cut it down to 10 and a half by 12. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just to show you guys. Um, so I always start if I can. I will score one inch down one side and then I flip it and score one inch down the other just as a guide but you don't have to have a full inch around your book um you know if it was three quarters of an inch that works too so don't waste paper if you don't have to but i know like doing this this will fit um the folio so i have 
Again, four and a half by eight and a half chipboard pieces. So two of those, and then this fine is three quarters of an inch by eight and a half. And as you can see, I like to use score tape when doing my covers. I just feel better when the entire piece is totally covered. That way I have no air bubbles. And if you've ever had air bubbles, you know what I'm talking about. So <laughs> I don't like them. So I cover the whole thing with score tape, but it's totally up to you. There's a lot of people that use uh, wet adhesive and they do just fine. And I'm sorry that my lighting is really dark. I had to switch brooms because my si or my sister, my daughter came back from college and that's usually where I film is in her room. Um, so I just had to move it back down to my second desk. And it is kind of hard for me to see down here. So this will be interesting. So I just use my guide. That's it. That's all that is for, for me is just a guide. And then I'm going to, let me grab my 1 8 inch tape. And again, you guys do not have to do this. This is just something I like to do. Um, I don't know, the Michaels paper for some reason cracks on me a lot. So I do like to use this for the spine, but you do not have to. It's just something for me, and it helps just, again, as a guide. So you can do, if you don't use score tape, I suggest just building a little shim out of your scraps, just like this. Put two of these together if you're using medium weight chipboard, and then you just use it as a shim and line up your chipboard like that. But for me, this is what works, and I've, tried everything and, and I can eyeball it um I don't know why I just do this I just go with it <laughs> but you can eyeball it too and again you'll be just fine and there are some people who like um the gusset here in between the spines or the chipboard I should say to be a quarter inch again totally up to you I like my books to be a little tighter so that's why I use um, 1 8 inch as my guide. Okay, so I'm going to take that off. I am literally just throwing this score tape on the, on the floor. Yeah, I can't even tell. It looks like I'm shaking the table too, so hopefully the camera is not shaking a whole bunch. Eventually... I have my daughter graduating from Wazoo in May. Yay. She wants to move out. Yay. Not that I wanted to because, you know, I do love my babies. But I am excited to have a lot more space in our house. And our son is 19 and he hasn't done anything with schooling yet. He's not even sure if he wants to, which we're leaving it totally up to him. And um, he's wanting to move out with his friend too. So I have serious plans <laughs> to move my craft room. I'm hoping I will be able to do that this summer. The plan is to move it from this little bedroom up to the game room, which will be a lot larger. Okay, so... Again, this is just my preference. Most tutorials do like, um, what is it, like 3 8 inch or a quarter inch here and then on the edge, which I've done with 90% of my mini albums. I just started doing this, so it works too. This is just me being totally lazy and trying to find ways to save time and not do all the extra taping so it covers the whole thing just the same but totally up to you there's just a lot of different ways and again you don't even have to use sport tape if you don't want to oh my goodness i can't wait to get my nails done Whew, these are killing me way too long okay 
Plus, they're still green from St. Patty's, which you can't tell this whole time on the camera. I think they have looked like they're black, but they're not. They are like a forest green color. Okay, so I'm just burnishing this down and really hitting the table. I am sorry if the camera is going crazy. I don't know what I'm doing here. And now the camera has stalled again. I'm just going to move it real quick. Oh my goodness, please keep going. That'll be really bad to have to start over. Okay, so we're gonna miter the corners. Let me grab my scissors. And again here, oh see? You guys got the comedy show again. I'm all in the camera, falling on the floor. Um. I do have this tool. I don't even know who it's by. Who is this by? Perfect, PerfectTrimRuler.com. And again, I did use this a ton. It tells you where to line it up. So you would just go, let me see if I can show it on there. Like that. And you can draw a pencil. You can cut it with an X-Acto knife. I don't use this anymore because now I'm used to just making it. But... For those that like the precision, you can totally get something like that. And even if I'm not exact, if I do mess up and have some showing again, I just go like this. <laughs> For some reason, I know it's not going to um, cover. And that has happened before. But again, our motto is we just go with it. I cut it sh too short a lot of the times. You just roll with it. So we are just mitering the corners here. So it should look like that. And I am going to have to do this tutorial in section so that the time is shorter since I haven't even attempted to try to figure out <laughs> how to edit. Again, any free time I have, I'm crafting. And this week, um, I was on vacation, so I'm really trying to see how many projects I can bust out. And this last little bit is on how many projects I can make out of one collection pack. So this is part of that challenge I gave myself. Um, so I do have a couple other projects that I will be sharing once we're done with this. And I just go through and I press it up against my chipboard because I do like to have nice crisp edges on my albums when I can. And there's times when I can't because I'll fold it wrong or not paying attention. And again, no one else can see it. At least that's what I tell myself. It helps, it helps me cope when I make a mistake. So I just kind of fold that in. Press it down and I can already tell like one of these corners is going to be a little long and I'm just going to trim that. If so, man, this table is really shaky. Definitely not a good filming table, so sorry about that. So let me see. So if you can see that, it's just a little bit off there. So I will just come through and just trim it a little bit. It isn't that big of a deal. Like I said, no one else will even notice that. But I know me, it's going to drive me crazy if I see that little bump out. Okay, so we have that fold in our sides and then press that and that just helps kind of get the paper bending and the fibers moving so you don't have um, where your edges start ripping sometimes with certain papers you just gotta be 
a little careful. And I don't like that side either. Okay, so we are good. So here is our initial base. So I'm just gonna kind of crease these in there. We're gonna have to do this again. And I have also done where I have added one page down the center with these folios and it's really cute. So I think I did, and I, th I think I still have it. So I might do a video just kind of of a, um, a throwback, but I have a Disney one that I did, that I did one page in the center so you easily could do that. So our base right now is just a little over 10 inches. It's 10 and 1 eighth, and it should be by eight and a half. Yep. So I'm just going to take a sheet and cut it down just slightly smaller than eight and a half. And again, it doesn't really matter on this as long as you cover up the exposed chipboard. So I just um, did one eighth shorter, and then what do we say? It was a little bit less than, we'll do a little bit less than 10 inches on here. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. So see how that's gonna lay on there, like so, and it just covers up that chipboard. So I will just, for, to speed up the process, get some glue. And this is art glitter glue that, of course, I get from Country Craft Creations. And you can't get this glue during the winter time. And if you are able to get it during the winter time, it's probably not a good thing because it's probably too liquidy. Oh, darn it. See, I already made a mistake because I didn't want to do this. I want to make sure that when I go to fold this, this is not going to bubble up and my glue might dry as I'm trying to do this. Okay, let's see if I can do this really fast. Just on these edges, I always do score tape. So again, when it folds, I'm just gonna put this on there. It won't, um, what do you call it? Yep, mm-hmm, it won't do something. It, it won't <laughs> bubble up. But let's see if I could hurry up because this art glitter glue is like the fastest drying glue ever. There's not a lot of wiggle room. Okay. Ooh. Okay, we got that on there. Oh my gosh, you guys are gonna have to comment if the camera is really shaky. And I know I can't do that on this table anymore. I see things shaking. I just don't know if it's actually shaking on the camera. Okay, so I think we are burnished. And then we just go through and we find our fold right there and we gently just start bending it. Just like that and I am not pressing hard at all because I do not want to go through my paper and I have done that before so I'm just kind of following the guide and then it'll sink down into the tape we can get everything burnished down in there there we go okay so that is our cover and I do like to go like that. That looks like pretty good there. This part wasn't pressed down all the way. Okay, it looks 
like everything else is good. Yep. Okay. And then all I'm doing is, and again, you don't have to do this. This is just what I do. I like the corners to be flat. <laughs> so I'll either do that with my bone folder or just kind of press it down a little bit. But here is what this looks like. And then let me just take that off really quick because that will show if I can find what I did with my eraser. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is the base of our album. Literally, just this. And then you decide what you want. So right now, this album is all white. You can totally cover this in a 12 by 12 um, decorative a sheet of paper. So you could do the same thing we did with the white with a decorative sheet of paper and then another decorative sheet in the middle. So just like on here, my base is craft, but how I covered the middle, I did it with a black piece of paper or cardstock. So you, it doesn't have to be all one color. You could do it however you want to. But for this album, because it's gonna be an Easter album, I have it all covered in white. And then I'm just going to show you just real quick what it will look like here with our matting. So we're gonna mat with this um, baby blue color just like that. And that will be in our next video. Hopefully you guys are staying with me. We should have a couple more videos to keep the tutorial going. But thank you guys so much for being patient and watching and hopefully it wasn't too shaky. Okay, see you on part two.